Hey friends and fans of Bob's Barn Workshop. Well, it's been a long time since we've been back here in the electronics shop. It's been kind of piled with stuff through the holidays. I haven't been able to get to it. But we have two small projects today. I'm going to combine them into one video. Hopefully they'll be interesting and, and useful. The first project we need to do is my wife's battery powered electric wine bottle opener. It has a corkscrew in the end here, electric motor, rechargeable battery. The battery just doesn't have any power left. I ordered a new battery pack, nickel metal hydrides, 150 milliamp, 4.8 volts. We'll be resoldering that in and testing it. And then something that's been in my my household since I've been married. I think this was the first tree topper we ever bought for our first Christmas tree in 1975. And the bulbs have been dying in it. Well, you can't put regular Christmas tree string bulbs in there because there's so few in here that you need special higher voltage bulbs because the bulbs are in series, okay? If you under extant, understand a little bit of electronics, whenever you put like light bulbs or resistors of the same values in series, the voltage is dropped equally across each one. So most um, of the little incandescent lights that you used to buy and still can are in a string of 50 and those are two and a half volt bulbs. Well, multiply that by times 50 you end up with like 150 volts and therefore each bulb has the right voltage across it. This only has 11 bulbs so you need like a 12 volt bulb. Well luckily I was looking at the original box that we keep and on the bottom it says to replace the bulbs use blah 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 uh, 0409-1812 volt clear or solid color bulbs for replacement. So I got searching for that number. I didn't find the exact number, but I found the the caveat was that I found 12 volt replacement incandescent bulbs. So we're going to work on this first because this is not really any soldering. This is all just pulling and replacing bulbs. So I'm going to set your camera over here. Now I'm missing a bulb and I think I'm just going to pull them all. And what I'm looking at here is, that's the back, because that doesn't have a reflector. This one has the little star thing on the front. Two layers of glitter. Glitter. And that one's stuck, so I'm just going to leave that. We'll set the little crystal aside. This is actually very beautiful when it's illuminated in, on the top of your tree. And I see that it's just clipped together. I'm trying to figure out how tight the bulb's wiring is. Because if I can unclip it, it'd be a lot easier. Because these bulbs that are inside the stars here are very hard to get to. And it looks like there's just little metal clips. There's one there. One two, I guess that's it, just the two. So am I going to be brave and take this apart? I think we can do it. And all, oh, they all come, they're all clipped to the back. Okay, so they're not going to all come apart. All right, so easy enough. One clip spring, one spring clips off. Boom, the other spring clip is off. And now, uh, trying to see if I can see anything else holding it together. Oh, this does. Okay, that holds the bottom together. So here we come. Everything but that bulb wants to come out. And. That's all right. Now we can see all the rest of them. So the trick with these bulbs is, is any replacement bulb will work if, if to the right voltage. The problem with these bulbs usually is the base. Well, here's the trick. You get your bulb out of the base 
the bulbs that I bought don't have bases. So you just pull out the old bulb, throw it in the trash, you get your new replacement bulb. They were a whole dollar twenty-two for ten. I don't know if I can. Shall we test this? Or just go for broke? I do have a power supply here. Let's hook it up to a power supply and see if and we can get her to uh, shine for us. All right, so right now I got the voltage on the. What I'm going to do is I'm going to short these together. And I'm going to back. the current way, 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 way down okay to milliamps. There's half 500 milliamps so we'll set it for like 100. Okay when that shorts, okay when I open this up now I got my bulb here my eyes ain't what they used to be dudes dudes and dudettes and it doesn't matter, there's no polarity to these incandescent bulbs. <clears throat> these are the world's crappiest test leads, by the way. Okay, so I've got a little glow. Currenting is limiting, i got to go up just a little bit. Okay, there's 12 volts. It'll be a little bit less than that. All right, so they'll be nice and bright. So now all you have to do is you get your leads parallel to each other and under some good light here. You put them down from the top of the bulb socket. One down each hole of the leg and okay there's there's your leads sticking out and they bend up each side of that square base on the narrow side and you look inside your socket thing here and push them back in so basically I'm gonna go around the whole thing I got once I'm gonna go counterclockwise from this one or clockwise from this one so I know where I'm at okay next one Pulls out. The bulb looks burnt. So I'm just tossing them in the garbage. I'm not going to test all these. Push it in deep into the socket. Bend the leads up each side. Place it in the socket. Now I need to keep going. I need to mark. I'm going to mark the bad ones somehow. <laughs> I need to get a, a marker. Hold on. All right, I got my OptiVisor on now, and I'm going to go. And the elements in these are a little different too. So I got two in, that's a bad one. I don't know if these are bad, but I'm just changing them all. They're black, blackened from heat. Okay. Now I won't get corn fused. And I'm just going to continue this around. If I run into anything new, I'll tell I'll you. Check it out. I got all the bulbs changed. Let's turn out the lights here a little bit. All of them illuminate now. All I've got to do is reassemble it. Cross your fingers, huh? <laughs> all right. I'm going to plug it so I don't shake it around and burn the light out or something. Now, how this reassembles. Pretty simple. It's 
got to go that away. Where's the slot for the wire? Oh, right there. Okay. There's already a notch. This was a well-designed ornament. Okay, so now this guy has to press up firmly in the bottom of there. I'm going to keep it apart while I put my uh, glitter on. Because when I press this together, I don't want it to come apart. There's one. There's the other. Alright. And now I just have to mate everything up correctly. There's some pinholes here where they need to go together. Mating pins. My wife's going to be very thrilled. She loved this ornament. <sighs> Loves. Now we got to figure out where did my clips go. <laughs> I think I'm going to put one here and one over here, and then the base goes on. See, this base thing goes on and holds the bottom together so you can clip it on a, the tip of your tree. And these, probably that's enough to hold it. But these little clips go on here somewhere. I'm going to have to get my OptiVisor on and my uh, needle nose pliers, I guess. These are real needle nose players. Yuck, they've been picking on something nasty. It's black. I want that in there. Probably used it in the car or something. Oh, that was easy. That was nothing. I put the other one over here. near the top. These are made for quick assembly. There he goes. We're all done. Well, shall we have a reveal here? Turn out the lights. Take off my OptiVisor. The rest of the basement is a mess, don't look. And there we go. Just a beautiful warm glow for the top of your tree and my wife will be very very happy. Let's back up a little bit so it's not quite so garish. There you go. I'm happy. Hep, hep, happy. Alright guys and gals that's it for that section. We will be doing uh, the wine opener in just a second here. As soon as I go show my wife she'll be so happy. Alright. Let's see what it takes to get this guy apart and, and fix him. I've got my OptiVisors on here so I can see if there's any screws in here. Yeah. I really just need to get down to that little circuit port down there, but see, they're soldered on from the other side, and I don't really want to cut these wires and splice them, but I don't want to pull this battery thing out, so maybe I will just cut the wires and splice them. I've got some... Uh, fine heat shrink. So that will be my plan. I don't want to have to pull that circuit board all the way out. Seem like a plan. I've got small heat shrink and I've got stripper here. I don't need to... It's not like this is... 
pulling horsepower, you know. Special little notch strippers here for a specific gauge of wire, but if you're just careful with them, you can get away with whatever gauge wire you got, but that was just about perfect anyway. Open up my brand new battery. I got it from Max Packs online. Ten bucks. I had to pay like a dollar fifty to get leads on it. Otherwise, you uh, is a heat shrink here. Put them on the make sure you put them on your leads first. My really good soldering iron died on me. My Weller station which ticks me off, but I got this older one here. some cleaning flux here. And I got real tin solder. Real lead solder, I mean. I'm so evil. Okay. I'm going to tin the ends of each of these wires. Now, I don't know if you can zoom in for a close-up on that or not. to see how I'm doing this. Let's see. Okay, I'm just laying my soldering iron under the wire and putting the solder on top of the wire. That way the wire is what heats the solder. Now I didn't twist them up or nothing because in this instance I don't think we have to. There's not going to be any stress on it. Of course, where's the dang? Why does it always happen? The dang piece of uh, shrinky is caught. It decides it's going to disappear on you. I've told you this about heat shrink before. Heat shrink doesn't really shrink. Heat shrink returns to its original size. It was heated and stretched. And then... Okay, so I'm just gonna... Lay this wire right side you. Now the thing about solder is you really need to keep it steady so you don't crystallize it. But I got a pretty steady hand. You just heat the two together and you can see the solder flow between them. And boom, that's done. And you slide your shrink over. And use the heat of the slobbering gun. Or as they say in Canada and Europe, solder. Denominational differences, right? You want to see that shrink down good, though, so she don't expose any anything to short out. All right. Now we'll do the other one. I didn't want to take this all apart. That would have been more interesting, but hold them steady. Make the solder wick between them. Oopsie, gotta redo it. I know you probably can't see what I'm doing in this position. Now, 
again. Use the barrel of the soldering iron to heat the heat shrink. Now, actually a hot air gun is better for this in any circumstance. I see guys doing with a lighter and that makes me wince. Lighters produce carbon, therefore produce possible tracks of voltage. I've got to be careful not to burn my plastic case here with the barrel of the soldering iron. All right. That guy is soldered. I'm going to unplug the iron because it's been burning away here a long time. Sorry for my armpit. I hope you got to see that. Dang it. All right, now we just got to figure out how this whole so, so mofo, whatever in the hell, turn them back together. Oh, she's got some zap already. I like it. I guess I'll just lay it right there, just like that. And there's like very few screws that hold this. There's four in the back. Like that. And then the shield. Ooh, ooh. This hasn't even been charged yet. Usually they ship them charged, pretty charged. So there should be four screws and four rubber plugs and this little six screws actually because the nose piece needs to go on here. And I need a little fine Phillips screwdriver. And I'll have to go get Okay, one. we're back. And when you're putting screws back in the plastic, did you see what I did? You back it up a hair until you feel it click down in. And that means you've started into the thre the original threads. See it? That way it keeps you from ripping out the, the threads. You're just going back into the original ones. And This should go right in easy. If you feel like you're cutting threads, I know you haven't got it in the original threads. And it's plastic, you don't have to reef it like 100 foot pounds or nothing. That one fell right in. Yeah, my wife hates using the manual wine bottle opener. The problem with this is, is it sits most of the year and then the holidays it gets used. No, should I go open a bottle of wine? No, I don't think so. Alright guys. Now, there were some nice little rubber plugs to cover the screw holes. Ooh, she just wants to go now. And there you go. She's all ready to open we like a local wine company called Bella Brook, which is up on Black Lake in northern New York. Great friends and great wines. Coyote Moon is a good one up in that area near Clayton. New York on the Thousand Islands. Um, let's see, who else? Uh, the Thousand Islands Winery up there. And I'm sure there's a lot of, several others, but those are the ones that I know of. All right, guys. That's it. She's going around and around. God bless. Take care. We'll see you next time.